seems to me the winter has taken hold here in Grand Marais. It's kind of cloudy out. It's that time of year where the ice isn't formed completely, but you can see the ice in the harbor back here. And uh, let's just head out and see if we can find some interesting ice patterns and wave pools. Not as many frozen wave pools as I had hoped. Seems like there's some fresh waves overnight or something that caused a lot of them to disappear. So I'm just walking out to the lighthouse to see what kind of ice is out here. The breakwater's pretty icy. Glad I brought some crampons along. It's really treacherous. Even those yak tracks wouldn't really work. So some hiking crampons are just crampons without aggressive front points. Definitely worthwhile bringing those along. It's pretty interesting ice out here this year, especially this early. The wire railing that keeps people safe is totally frozen over. It's still attached, surprisingly. If we get any storms this winter, I imagine it will snap as usual. Then they'll tie it back up in the spring and then it'll snap again next year. Constant struggle against the lake. Man-made structures just don't hold up very well. Even the lighthouse uh, was destroyed at one or two times. There's some great pancake ice out in the harbor. I'm gonna see if we can get a picture by juxtapositioning the pancake ice against the emergency ladder that's used in case you fall off the breakwater and need to get back up on it. It's a really thin layer of ice over top of everything makes it easy just to push things around. Uh, gotta watch out, don't want to kick the pack and cause it to fall into the big lake. See how slippery it is? It's really kind of crazy. You know, one of the things that I noticed today is that I way overdressed. When I looked at the temperature at my house, it said 18 degrees, so I grabbed my RAV Positron jacket, which is the warmest jacket I've ever owned. And uh, I'm even hot just standing still in this thing. So I really need to shed a later. One thing that I did find out though, if I spend a lot of time shooting ice, kneeling down in the cold, the Positron just keeps me warm. But today, with the sun starting to come out, man, I'm just overheating. I got a little distracted. This is kind of an interesting spot and uh, I'll be able to shoot the lighthouse through this opening. You can see the ice here. Uh, these icicles are hanging down. There's an opening that lines up with the lighthouse that way. So this should be pretty interesting. Nice juxtaposition between the lighthouse and the icicles. Uh, it's a classic shot in Grand Marais. I've shot it before. I've seen it shot by other people. But it's still fun to shoot these kind of images. So this shot's going to take a real wide angle lens because uh, I'm going to need a lot of depth of field. And the wider your lens is, the more depth of field you get. So it's a good choice to use here. Plus then it will give me a, a bunch of these icicles in front of me. Um, and hopefully in the background, the lighthouse will either be in focus or appear to be in focus when printed big. So I have my shot set up and I'm at f22 and I'm still not getting enough depth of field. Um, so uh, the lighthouse is going to be pretty small in the shot, so I'm just going to go with it. It'll probably look just sh sharp up to like 13 by 19 or something. I don't know that this would be a best-selling print. It's just kind of fun to shoot. So we'll, we'll see what we get. All right, I ended up finding a wave pool full of patterns. It's one of the biggest wave pools that I've seen in a long time. that had a lot of patterns on it. Be able to take quite a few really cool pictures of this one. I'm going to use a macro lens, 105 millimeter macro, uh, get down close. Each of the individual pictures will end up being about a couple inches across, 
the patterns are just insane in this formation so I should be able to get a bunch of really cool shots here So these are the kind of ice patterns that I was out there looking for on this first one. Really like how busy it is. It's just amazing how many different types of looks that ice can have as it freezes. You can see the curved lines with the white lines around them. Um, there's almost like a bird-like structure in the middle of it. But it's just this motion of the ice freezing and pouring over each other that I really like. In the second image, I like the round egg-like structure right in the upper right of the picture. And just below it, the ice is crystal clear and you can see down to the rock below. That's pretty fascinating for me. I also like how the ice cracked up in the, with that diagonal line in the right-hand side. And then you see those lines just kind of flow from the left side to the right side. For the third image I captured, there were two lobes of ice formations that came in together from the left and the right side and meet in the middle. Um, and then before they could touch each other, there's like another formation of ice that froze to separate them. That's kind of fascinating to me. Um, and then you can just see how the ice has started to crack in the various places as it froze. So what happens with these wave pools is they fill up. And then as they're freezing, the, the water actually just drains out and drains away. And as it drains away, you start to get these different freezing formations happen. Eventually, when there's too much weight on the ice because there's no water underneath supporting, it will start to crack. And that's what I think you're seeing in this shot. So for this last one, what I really like about it is that it looks like an aerial shot. So it's almost like there's a river running through the center of it, and then there's various land masses coming in. This is by far my favorite shot that I got out of this day. And uh, if you look closely, you can see just the little cracks and the air bubbles in the ice. There's just so much going on here that makes it fascinating to look at. I could look at these kind of pictures and this type of ice all day long. It just never gets old.